Welcome back to Buffalo Head Homestead where we uh, went to the local bookstore and uh, kind of raided the shelves here. So, uh, backyard homestead all about uh, growing your own food in a quarter acre. Uh, kitchen hacks, which is actually pretty neat. Country Wisdom Almanac here. Uh, lots of uh, thinking type tips there that make you kind of consider, you know. Uh, Pioneer Woman Cook's Cookbook. Uh, this is uh, Mary's little baby here now. And uh, your cabin in the woods. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of each of them and uh, some things I liked and didn't about each of the books we picked up today. First book here is uh, Cab Your Cabin in the Woods. Really neat book, nice hardcover. Uh, one thing I really like about this is the pages. They're, they're very hefty. They have a very sharp cut edge on them. It's kind of old school. Um, they also have the uh, fake yellowing around it so it looks old. Um, table of contents for you there if you're considering purchasing this book at all. And we're going to get into it. There's a bunch of cool little things in the sides. Um, you know, some drawings. Uh, there's, you know, prints for different animals and whatnot uh, but it does go into uh, a lot of get your mind thinking kind of things you know uh, has some basic plans for some cabins uh, for a tent you know uh, the basics and then some more elaborate stuff like you can easily do a lot of this on your own uh, shows you a little bit of how to build a fireplace in here somewhere. Uh, great idea for a shed. Something I wouldn't have thought of. Make the doors swing out and you know double your uh, interior space with a little roof. You know, uh, cool little ideas like that. Tips on your different tools. Uh, cost to consider. Uh, this is actually one I was looking into a little bit myself. Has different notches. Considering doing a uh, post frame building with some log cabin elements to it, uh, this will come in handy. You know, uh, they're very, very simple notches, actually. Believe it or not, that's your uh, your Lincoln logs right there. And uh, how to do some chinking. Nice little illustrations. I, I love the illustrations in this book, honestly. Um, detail of a fireplace, a bunch of other fireplace based uh, ideas, uh, hot cold water system, dealing with your waste, um, you know a couple more drawings of plants down here so you, you'll learn a lot about your plants that are available, uh, cool ideas like a mobile camp, um, you know different ways to cook food. It's actually a decent cooking section in here, um, and the artwork, the artwork's just so cool, honestly it is. It's kind of worthwhile just staring at the artwork in of itself. Um, so yeah, this is a decently good book. I don't want to spoil everything for you here, um, because, you know, you gotta go out and buy it, but, um, not being paid for this honest review I do like this book and one cool thing here in the front is a nice little layout of I guess the author's home cabin it shows you can follow the legend uh, down here at the bottom <coughs> nice little layout of the owners It's a nice little layout of the author's uh, cabin area here. A uh, little legend at the bottom telling you what everything is. I guess how he set his up, or uh, she even, I'm not even sure. Conrad E. I'm not even saying that. I guess that would be a he. So how he set his uh, little setup there with his cabin up. And lots of little tips that you could work into uh, building your own building uh, in here. And a lot of passages that'll just make you think, um, you know, buying land, uh, what do you want to have on this land, um, you know, your ex, 
you know, it just gets you thinking about an axe, different axes, a sharp axe versus a dull axe. Um, you know, it gets you, it gets you in that mindset to go a lot further with it. And that's what I like about this book. I've already paged through it, read a couple excerpts here and there, and it seems to be very interesting so far. We're gonna cover more on it. And like I said, you're following our journey. So you're gonna see, as we use it, you're gonna see us pull it out and show you more. Next is a Country Woodsman Almanac. Um, just literally hundreds of tips based on the seasons. It's segregated by seasons, the animals, cooking, crafts, gardening, health and wellness, home, and it goes to the next season. Um, you know, lots of stuff, when to plant vegetables, when to harvest vegetables, uh, hints of mint, um, you know, drying your firewood, uh, you know, just lots of good stuff, lots of interesting stuff, a lot of stuff you, you wouldn't think about. Um, you know, uh, especially like here's, I mean, it literally touches on everything. Here's caring for horse tech, um, you know, dealing with dogs, dealing with cats, food, recipes, um, lots of stuff on birds and trees and crops, uh, how to uh, prepare small game and larger game and poultry. Um, again, more food, uh, even right here is, uh, you know, the perfect, uh, the ideal chicken fence even, or making a run in shed, uh, honeybees, you name it, it's in here, there's at least a tip on it, really, really cool book, come to the back, uh, it has the typical weather along with, uh, summer winter solstice, um, only goes up to 2020 for that. Wish it would have went a little more. A um, bunch of other reference type charts there. But if you look at it in total, once I get to that page, stolen for time, uh, 373 tips in this book. Really cool, really neat. Segregated kind of by season. But something you can just, I mean, open one a day. You know, it starts in spring, goes to winter. Start on, you know, start on one and first day of spring and go through and, you know, try to enact that tip. Um, it's a really good book. I might actually go through one a day on this at one point in time. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't read the whole thing yet like uh, the other books, but if it works out like that or to do, um, you know, a couple a week, because some of them, uh, I know there's uh, repairing a leaky faucet in here. I'm not going to let a faucet leak for a year just so I can repair it. So, either way, awesome book. I like this one a lot. It has lots of cool stuff in it. Um, you know, uh, very general and crafts, home improvements, recipes, homemade remedies. Homemade remedies is a couple good uh, ones for like salves and that on there. Um, not really much for like six stomach and whatnot, but uh, Country Woodsman, uh, Country Wisdom Almanac. Wow, I can't read upside down. Country Wisdom Almanac um, was another one of our choices there at the local bookstore. Pretty cool book. Um, lots of good stuff in it, really is. Next one's the uh, Backyard Homestead. It's all about uh, raising your food on a quarter acre, you know. Um, Get into it here a couple pages and you'll see, you know, uh, different uh, locations, how to set it up, estimating your harvest, um, half an acre, a quarter acre, um, tenth of an acre even, which a tenth of an acre, that's, that's, that's horrible, that's like nothing, you don't even know what you can see everything is like dedicated to such activities, um, which I may follow that one in my current suburbia yard actually as a practice run, minus the animals because you can't have chickens. Uh, it's against regulations in the county unfortunately. Um, quarter acre, half acre, and uh, you know, vegetable garden, uh, strawberries and such, fruits, uh, different yields, you know. Um, the hardiness zones for the USDA. It's a lot of hard data in here, really is. 
but when you go, hey, I got this, I need to know how to grow it, um, you know, you, you got that kind of stuff in here. Uh, nuts, um, grains, uh, meat animals, poultry, goats, rabbits, sheep, uh, cattle, you know, so, pigs too. Um, preserving uh, your meat, thawing your meat, freezing your meat, cooking your meat. Um, I think there's a cooking section on vegetables here too. And then uh, food from the wild, you know, what you can uh, pretty much go and pick out in nature. So, uh, really cool book. It's all about the crops and the food. That's crops, animals, and food. Not much caring for animals, but the basics and how to make that animal into food. So, uh, Your Inner Fat Kid, this will be Your Inner Fat Kid's favorite book. The Backyard Homestead, another one that really stood out to us and uh, had some interesting information in it. And the nice thing is we picked a good variety. Some of the tips do overlap, but most of these books were getting a uh, decent coverage of everything with this uh, selection we have. This was one of two of my picks actually, the other three were his. Uh, this is the Pio Pioneer Woman Cooks, so starts everything from basically the bare minimum scratch, it has a nice thick hard cover on it, uh, it has pictures of her family, it shows you from how to make your own iced coffee to how to make your own donuts, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, there's pizzas, it even tells you like where you can find the page that helps you make your pizza dough, or shows you how to make it with the recipes. It's pretty much making everything from scratch. And it, it just, like, does it here. say how many recipes are in it? It does not. So there's a lot of recipes, as there you can a, see. There is a lot of recipes from breakfast all the way to desserts. There's soups, there's sides, there's a picture of a horse. She's hinting at me. She, she, she wants a horse on the homestead, so. <laughs> it shows you different ways to uh, make your veggies and has pictures of her. In general, I really do love this book. I'm just super excited to make my own foods from scratch. Even ice cream, my favorite. So pretty much every recipe in here is straight up from scratch. Yes. Raw ingredients to finished product. And even she shows you how to do canning as pickles and all different kinds of canning. There's strawberry jam. Uh, in another video, I will show you my canning. In general, very good book. Yeah, I love it. Want to see more of the recipes? Keep watching because uh, whenever she does tackle one of these, she will bring out the book and show you the recipe. The second pick was the Kitchen Hacks, which I really love. It shows you from cleaning kitchen hacks, different ways to clean your dishes, to how to sort your sponges or hanging your gloves so they don't get mildewy. Um, it shows you uh, how to organize your small kitchen if you have a small kitchen. Um, Which I'm sure most of our viewers do. And in general, it uses other items to help you organize your kitchen, which is really nice. I do like that. But, um, I was maybe thinking of doing it myself. There's a few recipes in here. This one has ice cream, um, there's brownies later on. Um, there's food prep hacks, how to prepare your food in different ways, or how to get them so they're easily prepared. This one right here looks like a good one because I hate cutting chicken because it slides Slippery. everywhere. Yes, definitely. Uh, unless you're like me and chicken don't slide when I cut it because I don't really do the cooking. <laughs> um, there's also tips back here for like general hacks like you could use uh, vegetable oil to get a sticker off a plum or an apple or you can use a peeler which is really nice to know. 
There's hacks that are you can use inside and outside your kitchen. I didn't really get to look into this one too much, uh, but later on if I do use one of these hacks, I will show you guys how I did it and where I found it. Uh, there's storage hacks, there's all sorts of really cool kitchen hacks in here that I really do think I'll be using later on. Um, in general, this book is really informational. Uh, if you know what you're looking for, then this is definitely the book to go to. I just saw something here at the back which actually is really interesting. We can get back to it somehow. That's a huge index. Um, my conversion chart here, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, substitutes. So, you know, um, how much heavy cream, how much evaporated milk, uh, you know, uh, if you want to do a dairy-free substitute for milk, uh, you want to substitute for sour cream, um, you know, if you have wine and cooking, you want uh, something non-alcoholic, you know, um, so there's all those substitutes there. Uh, chocolate and nuts this is a that's a real cool section and we just got to the end of it but the substitutes is a real good thing especially in a homestead situation where your nearest you know your nearest um, grocery store might be an hour away which is actually a substitute section in one of the other books I think too I remember seeing I don't remember which one it was she don't either so um, but that being said, substitutes like that, that's always a good thing to have. Yeah, definitely in general I do like this book, especially that it comes with recipes. Like, for example, the dairy-free whipped cream. I never knew I could make my own whipped cream, so that's a good idea to know. Uh, but in general, I will be using this book throughout the journey. and. wrap up here's our uh, five choices from the local bookstore when we uh, went rated and this wasn't like oh we're gonna pick five books it was a let's go through here and pick one or two books and well we came home with five I think that might be a little bit Mary's fault because she loves books and when I told her to pick like one she picked like six so we narrowed it down to five um, and they're all good choices you know depending on what you're gonna do with your preferred uh, path here, but uh, you know, if we do use any tips out of these, for sure we'll be uh, mentioning them and uh, showing them to you, um, because it is all about that learning journey, and you know, if you can uh, learn something from one of these books, that might save you from uh, having to research it on the internet, which we all know kind of is horrible sometimes, so you know, having the books around is always, always nice. So. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed our uh, quick reviews of these books. Didn't want to spoil too much for you. And uh, make sure you subscribe to Bufflehead Homestead.